Hi, my name's Andy and I teach maths and statistics at a major London university. Part of my job there involves training students in the techniques needed to pass the dreaded numeracy skills test. Last year, all of my students passed um, before graduation in July 2012. And that was about 250 of them. And I'm fully expecting the same this year. Now, the video you're about to watch is from practice test four of the calculator section from the Department for Education's practice test series. More practice questions are available at my e-learning site, um, which is accessible using the link below. This contains information on things like how do you book the test, locating a test centre, how do you obtain extra time if, for example, you're a dyslexic student. It has lots of practice mental arithmetic tests and some practice tests from the calculator section as well. A special feature of my site is that I offer tutor assistance from myself via a dedicated help forum. So please don't be daunted by this test. If you stick with me, you'll get through it. So if you're ready, let's begin. Question 13. As part of a data handling exercise, a group of pupils was investigating attendance at after school clubs at their school. On a particular day, the attendance was shown in table one. Approximately what fraction of the pupils attended the sports club? Drag and drop the closest fraction into the box. So notice the words they've used straight away. They've said approximately what fraction. Okay, so there's not going to be an exact answer to this question. So let's bring up our calculator. And we're interested in the sports club. So the number that attended sports clubs was 18 out of a total of 53. So we'll type that into the calculator. 18 divided by 53. And we get an answer of 0 0.3396 and so on. So your job is to find which of these fractions is closest to that proportion. So hopefully you know that a third is equal to 0 0.3333 recurring. So that would be the answer. If for some reason you didn't know that, then you could just check and type type in the fractions yourself. One divided by three, 0 0.333. If you weren't sure, you could try out some of the other ones. But really these fractions, they should be in your head Question 14. So this time they're asking, a survey of pupils shows that at least 30% of the 256 pupils in the school want to come to after school clubs. On a particular day, attendance was shown as in table one below. What is the minimum number of extra pupils above the 53 who want to come to after school clubs? So, okay, let's bring the calculator up straight away. And this is the key information, the 30%. So your job is to work out, first of all, what is 30% of 256? So you might know already that 30% as a decimal is 0 0.3. But if not, we just do 30 divided by 100. There's our 0 0.3. And we times that by the 256 pupils in the school. So we get 76.8, which we're going to round up to 77 pupils. But that's not the final answer because the question was saying, what is the minimum number of pupils above the 53 who want to come to after school clubs? So the survey says that 77 pupils would like to go. We subtract that from the 53 to get 24. So our answer is 24 pupils. Question 15. A head teacher produced the following table to show performance in maths at GCSE from 2007 to 2010. The table shows the percentage of candidates achieving each of the possible grades. Percentages have been rounded to the nearest whole number and you have to indicate all the true statements. So in this question, there's actually three sub questions and you have to get all of them correct in order to score the one mark that is available. Sounds a bit of a swizz, I know, but that's what we have to deal with. 
Okay, so we take them one by one, starting with statement one. The number of pupils who gained a U grade increased each year. So here's the U grade and here's the years. So we've got six, but remember, what's this? This is a percent. These are all in percentages. So 6% out of 180 pupils, 5% out of 200 pupils, and so on. So we just have to evaluate those percentages. So we'll bring the calculator up to do that. And we'll do the first one as 6 divided by 100 is 6%. It will really help you a lot if you can just be able to convert um, what a percent is into its decimal form. So 6%, that's 0 0.06. 7%, 0 0.07, and so on. So, okay, we have 0 0.06, and we're going to multiply that by the 180 pupils that took the exam in 2007. And we get 10.8. Okay, so we'll, we'll just remember that, or we'll write that on our mini whiteboard that we're allowed to use. So we'll just keep that in our memory for now. What about the next year? That was 5% out of 200. Now, if your mental arithmetic is pretty good, 5% of 100 is 5. So 5% 5 of 200 is going to be 10. If you don't believe me, let, let's prove it. So 5% is 0 0.05. And we times that by 200. And there's our 10. OK. So look at the statement. It says the number of pupils who gained a U grade increased each year. Well, at the first hurdle, that statement has failed because it went from 10.8 here or 11 pupils and it went down straight away. So we don't have to even continue on to the, evaluate the next years because that's a false statement. And to register a false statement on these questions, you just leave the box alone. If we thought this was a true statement, we would just tick the box, and that means we think that's true. But we don't think it's true, so we're going to untick it and move on to the next question. So statement two is saying the number of pupils who gained a grade C increases each year. So this is a similar kind of question, a little bit monotonous, um, but that's, on, that's just what we have to deal with with these exams. So C grade now. In 2007, 23% out of 180 got a C grade. So that's what we're, we're looking for. 23%, can you guess what that is as a decimal? 0.23 multiplied by 180, 41.4. So we'll, we'll note that one down or, or remember it, 41.4. What about the next year? And to continue doing this, I'm not going to use my mouse pressing these keys. I'm going to use my, my number pad on my keyboard, which is far, far quicker. And you can experiment with what you like. So what's the next one? It's 22 out of 200. You can do this one in your head, but 22% of 100 would be 22. So 22% of 200 has to be double that amount, which is 44. But let's just confirm that. So we have 0.22 multiplied by 200 and I press my return key on the keyboard and that gives me the 44. Now that did increase from the previous previous number. So let's see if it carries on increasing. So let's do the next one. 22% of 230 this time. 0 0.22 times 230. Well that one had to increase because there were more pupils involved and the same percentage, but we, we needed to know the number, so we'll note that one down, 50.6, and that one increased from the previous year as well. So finally, let's do the last one. The last one is 20% of 270, so let's just do that one quickly. 0 0.2 times 270, press return, we get 54. And that one is another increase. So. This statement is true, and we're going to mark that as true. Finally, the number of pupils who achieved a B grade in 2008, was that double the number with the same grade in 2005? Now, okay, let's look at this. Can you see the mistake? 2005, where does that appear in our, in our table here? It doesn't. So what that means is the 
they've made a cock up basically and you see these from time to time they wanted to replace 2008 with the year 2010 and this one with 2007 um, and how I know that is because if you scroll a little bit if you activate the interactive options we can see the show me button let me remove the calculator for now this is where you can see some of the worked answers sometimes these are very good sometimes they're useless and don't give you anything but here the answers are referring to 2010 and 2007 but the question refers to 2008 and 2005 so they're cock up not ours but it's a, it's a similar story to how we answered the other questions so if we're interested in a B grade in 2010, well look what we did, it was 20% out of 270, 54 pupils. And in 2007, it was 15% out of 180 pupils, which is 27. And that is double, so this statement would be true had they asked us the right question in the first place. Hopefully you won't get that in the real test that you're doing. Question 16. As part of a review of performance, a geography teacher prepared a table of marks, another table, um, for eight pupils from a series of tests throughout the year. Drag and drop the correct values to complete the table. Great, I love the drag and drop questions because you can usually answer them very, very quickly and save lots of time for the harder questions that are coming up. Okay, so we only have to fill in two values. Let's start with this one. This one is looking for the range of marks in test five. So what does the range mean? It has a, has a meaning in maths and a very similar meaning in English. It just means what is the difference between the, the highest score and the lowest score. So let's see what the highest score in test five was. Well, here's a 70. Anything higher than a 70? Nope. So 70 is the highest. What's the smallest? I see 27. Anything lower than 27? No. So we need to do 70, take away 27. Um, practice mental arithmetic. If we just did 70, take away 30 and add 3, well, that's the same thing. So 70 minus 30 is 40. Add 3 to get 43. But if you're a little shaky on the mental maths, don't worry about it. We'll just use our calculator to confirm. 70 minus 27. There we go. There's our 43. And that is one of our possible answers, which is a relief. So we drag that into place and that one's done. How quick was that? So for the second one, it's after the mean for the pupil. What does the mean mean? <laughs> um, that one just is testing your knowledge um, of do you know what this one is about? So the mean is the average. Uh, it's the one where you add up all the numbers and you divide by how many numbers there are. But we have to do it across the ways this time because it's the mean for the pupil, pupil C. So we have to add up these five numbers and then divide by five. And it's much quicker to use your number pad on your, on your keyboard than typing these ones in with the mouse. So let me show you. So we have, what do we have? 41, add 51, add 44, add 56, add 67. Press return and we get 259. We're dividing that one by how much? dividing it by 5 because there are 5 numbers and we get 51.8 and once again that is one of our possible answers and we'll just drag that one into place and that one's done. Question 17. Now I know what you're thinking, you're thinking oh my god look at all these words and numbers. First things first, don't panic, just read it to yourself once without stopping and then we'll take, take it from there. So I'll give you 10 seconds to read this first one. Okay, this type of question is a favourite for the QTS. It's all about travel expenses and how much money the teacher is entitled to for travelling to something like a training course. So the important information here is how much money they're going to pay for the number of miles travelled. So here they say, okay, we'll pay you 32 and a half pence for the first 100 miles. But anything above that, we'll pay you but we'll pay you a lower rate of 27 and a half pence. Um, they'll also pay for any train travel and we can see that there's two train journeys and they've got fixed costs associated. 
So your job is to work out how much money can the teacher expect to get. So first of all, let's bring our trusty calculator back and we just add up the number of miles um, that were traveled. So it's two lots of 27, which is 54. We'll add that to three lots of 32, which is how much? 30, 60, 90, 246, so that's 96. And we'll add that to two lots of 18, which is 36. So the total number of miles traveled in the year was 186. And look at the rule, it says they'll pay for the first 100 of them, it was 32 and a half. So let's work that one out. So it's 32 and a half times times 100 is what we're looking for. So let's do that. 32.5 times by 100. 3,250, but that's pence. So we'll divide by 100 now to get 32 pounds 50. So we did that the long way. You probably could have just jumped on that straight away as being 32 pounds 50, but that, that's the longer way of getting there. And we just make a note of that. So there's 86 more miles remaining. And so for those 86 miles, they're gonna pay us, but they'll pay us at a lower rate. And they're gonna pay us 27 and a half pence for each of these miles. So we type that in, 27 and a half pence. So we have 2,365 pence. How many pounds is that? Well, we divide by 100. So that's 23 pounds and 65 pence. So if we add that to the previous figure that we worked out for the first 100 miles, which was 32 pounds 50. So that's 56 pounds and 15 pence, but that's not the final answer. A lot of people would just type that in and unfortunately they get the question wrong because we also have to add in the train travel as well. So that was an extra. So that's 11 pounds 50, so or 11.5 plus four pounds 70, which is 4.7. And we'll add that to our 56 pounds 15 pence for the, for the car journeys. So the total amount that the teacher can claim is 72 pounds and 35 pence. So let's type that in now. Notice that you'll never have to type any units for, for any answer, you just have to type the numbers. Question 18. Okay, we have a box and whisker diagram. Um, these are brilliant because they're so quick and easy to score the marks available. So let's look at this. Okay, department meeting, head of maths is using box and whisker diagrams to show some percentage marks for boys and girls in two classes. Your job is to indicate all the true statements and we'll go through them one by one. So they're saying in class A, class A boys, do they have the greatest range of percentage marks? So here's class A, there's the boys. So we're talking about this box and whisker plot here. And the range is just the difference between the, the highest score and the lowest score. Now we don't even have to work that out. We can just look at this by eye and see that the range from the biggest to the smallest is clearly the greatest in this box and whisker um, diagram than any of the others. So yes, that one's true. Statement number two, class A girls have the lowest median and the smallest range of percentage marks. Okay, so let's find the class A girls first. So here's class A again, and there's the girls. So this is the box and whisker that we're talking about here. So does it have the lowest median first? Now the median is represented by the white line in the middle of, doesn't have to be in the middle of the box, so the white line that you see in the box, that represents the, the, the middle score of all the girls in class A. Um, for this question, we didn't even have to know that. If you just remember that the line in the box, part of the box and whisker, that represents the median, and here you can see it's clearly the lowest in, in any of the others. So that, that first part is true, but what about this second part? Does it also have the smallest range of percentage marks? And I think clearly, just by eye again, you can see that it does. Finally, only class B boys have a median percentage mark above 50. So okay, let's look at 50, 50% 50 is here. 
and we already saw in the previous statement what the median was that's these lines here so let's scroll along here we go here's one that's over 50 that's class a boys so that's a false statement we found we found something contrary to the statement here so this one's false and because we think it's false we'll just leave that one um, uncolored in question 19 so there's a school trip to Iceland very nice for each of 25 pupils and they're allowed to take 40 pounds spending money with them prior to the visit the teacher collected all the money and exchanged it for Icelandic krona the exchange rate was one pound gives you 141 and a half krona but the bad part is you have to pay a commission of one percent on that how many krona did each pupil have as spending money after the commission was deducted give your answer to the nearest krona okay so if you're told one pound gives you 141.5 krona so that means 40 pounds will buy you bring our calculator back 40 times by 141.5 krona so that gets you 5660 krona so we have to deduct from that one percent so a one percent deduction from this amount is imagine there's a decimal place here we move it one space two spaces along we have to subtract from this amount 56.60 krona so let's do that we subtract 56.6 krona that gives us 5603.4 krona for each student to spend but remember the answer said give your answer to the nearest krona so you'll just type 5603 they don't want any decimal places in this one question 20 we have a line chart to inform a discussion on some mass test results the subject leader presented the following graph showing the percentage of pupils achieving level 4 and above your job is to indicate all the true statements okay so statement 1 the school's results were better than the national results in 3 of the 5 years so let's take a look at the graph the school their results are colored in pink with a dotted line the national results are in a blue bold line so let's look at the years one by one in year six the school did better so that's one in year in this year the school did better as well so that's two in this year the school didn't do better so that one doesn't count in this one it did do better and in this one it was lower so that was one two three of the five years the school did better so that statement is true statement two the school's results were within two percent of the national results each year so let's look at that let's start over here this time so the difference between the scores here is two percent so that's 60 and 62 so that's two percent difference that's allowed moving to the next year uh oh here we go there's a difference of how many here it's three so that statement is false we don't even have to look at any of these other differences we know this statement's false and we just leave that one uncolored in finally the improvement for the school from year two to six was three percentage points better than the national improvement from year two to six so that was quite a mouthful so let's break that one down so year two to year six for the school they went from 60 all the way up to 72 that's a difference of 12 points the national picture they went from 62 up to 71 that's a difference of nine percentage points so the school's increase was 12 percentage points and the national increase was nine percentage points the difference between those two numbers is three which is exactly what this statement is asking you so that statement is true for question 21 we have a bar chart um, so in preparation for literacy teaching a newly appointed year two teacher 
looked at the number of languages spoken by pupils in three classes of the year group that's in the school. Click on the class in the table which has half of the pupils in the year group who speak exactly two languages. Now this one looks a lot harder than it actually is. Look at the information. They only care about two languages being spoken. So we don't care about this bar or this bar or this bar. We just care about two languages being spoken. So in total, we can see that there are, well, here's 20 and it goes down two to here. So there's 18 pupils that speak two languages in the year group. And half of them, well, half of them are here. It's nine from class W that speak two languages. So our answer is simply class W. Question 22. Okay, so a school in Manchester is planning to visit a school in Exeter. Some of the journey will be on motorways, the rest of the journey on ordinary roads. The table below shows the planned journey details. The teacher uses this formula to estimate the total journey time. If the average speed is 60 miles per hour, what is the journey time according to the formula? Okay, this one also looks more difficult than it is. You don't actually need any of these intermediate details to apply the formula. We just care about the total distance in miles covered and the total distance from the school until the visiting school is 240 miles. So let's bring our calculator. We have 240 miles times by 1.25 press return I get 300 the formula now says to divide by the average speed which they've told us is 60 miles per hour so I'll just divide by 60 and my answer is 5 and that's 5 hours just type that in easy as that question 23 so we have a scatter graph and it shows the number of pupils and number of computers for 50 local schools. For the schools shown, the mean number of pupils is 217 and the mean number of computers is 33. Click on the dot that represents the school that is closest to average. Okay, my first comment to this question is it's completely stupid, but let's answer it all the same. Okay, so mean means the average and the school, the average school out of these dots, so there's 50 dots, each one represents a school. We just have to find the intersection on the graph between 217 pupils and 33 computers. So let's start on this axis. So this is number of computers and let's find where 33 is. So from here to here is a difference of 10 and there's five little sub units there so each one of them is worth two so 33 is going to be roughly about here um, on the horizontal axis we're looking for 217 so let me carefully go along 200 is here um, there's five sub levels as before but each of these main levels here there's 25 so each one of these is worth five so hopefully i kept my cursor in the right place there so if we go to here, we're on 205, 210, 215, 217 would be about here. So for me, the closest one to that is, is this school here. But once again, I have to point out that it's a very stupid question and I hope you don't get asked anything like this in the real exam. Question 24. A parents' evening is planned to last from 1615 to 1900 hours. Within that time, teachers will have a break from 1730 until 1745, and each appointment is scheduled to last eight minutes. What is the maximum number of appointments each teacher can have? Okay, so the total duration of the parents' evening goes from 16.15, so that's 4.15 until 7 o'clock. So that's two and three quarter hours or two hours and 45 minutes. And there's a break of 15 minutes. So that leaves 
two hours and 30 minutes available in which the teachers can meet with parents. There are 60 minutes in an hour, so in two hours there's 120, plus the extra 30 minutes means there's 150 minutes available for the parents' evening. We bring our calculator onto the screen, we type that in, we have 150 minutes available, divide that by slots, appointment slots that last 8 minutes, we get 18.75. Now this is a bit of a sneaky question. Normally you would round this one up and say, ah, 19. This one you can't because you must round down on this one because if you had seen 18 people, you wouldn't quite have enough time to see the final person. You'd have somewhere less than eight minutes remaining. So this is one of those very sneaky questions where you must round down. 18 is the correct answer. Question 25. The chart below shows the number of staff days out of school for professional development between 2003 and 2008. The table below shows the total number of staff days out of school for all reasons in the same time period. Drag and drop the correct values in the boxes to show the proportion of staff days out of school for professional development in 2005 and 2008. Okay, great stuff. Magic words, drag and drop, which means this is going to be very easy. So the first year we're interested in is 2005. And in 2005, there were 26 days for professional development out of a total of 40. So let's bring our calculator into play. And we type 26 divided by 40, press return, 0 0.65 and that is one of our options so we just drag that into place. Secondly 2008, well let's have a look, there were 24 days for professional development out of a total of 60. So let's do that. 24 divided by 60 press return 0 0.4 and that is another option. Simple as that, we love drag and drop questions. Question 26. Primary teachers in the core subjects attended a meeting to review progress at Key Stage 2. Indicate all the true statements. Statement 1. The school's lowest point score was in Year 4. So let's have a look at the chart. So the school is highlighted in a blue line and the national score is highlighted by an orange line. So for this statement we just want the blue line. Let's have a look at year four. Year four is clearly the lowest score out of any of the school's um, years. So that statement is true. Statement two, the school's average points score fell from year two to year four. So it's the school once again, so it's the blue line again. Here's year two. Going to year three, it decreases. And from year three to year four, it does decrease again. So that's a continuous um, drop in the score, so that's also true. Statement 3. Since year 4, the trend of improvement in the school's average point score has been greater than the trend of improvement in the national average point score. So, from year 4, we look at the school's improvement. So, in year 4, the score was 22, and that rose all the way up to around 27 points. Okay, so that's a five point increase. Compare that with the national picture, which barely goes up even a single point. So that statement is also clearly true. Question 27. Point and click on the year in which the school made the greatest progress in average points score. So once again, the school is the blue line. So that's what we're interested in. And the greatest progress really is the greatest improvement, which is indicated by a positive score, a score going up. And the greatest or the steepest slope in any, in any year is, is this one right here. So that one must be year seven. Well, that's all for today. Um, I hope you found the video useful. 
Um, if you've got any feedback for me at all, I'd love to hear it, so please put your comments down. So for more demonstrations and more practice tests, please visit us online at our e-learning course, which is using this link here. So I hope to see you online soon. See you next time.